So today is April 26, 2018. Let's see here. There's a special thing going on today. What could that be? Oh, that's right. It's opening day for Avengers Infinity War. Welcome to the special Avengers theme edition of the Game Changer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm indeed Nate the Epic Great. I'm being joined here by the Nebula to my Thanos, that being the one, the only Miss Victory Bell. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am more than just hyped right now. Oh my gosh. This has been years in the making and it's finally, finally come. And you know something? I'm also still a little bit kicking myself because I could have seen the movie sooner, but due to unforeseen circumstances, well, actually I saw these circumstances coming. I was not able to see it. So, uh, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I'm going to see it tomorrow morning. And I'm going to see you again on Tuesday and maybe one more time next week. So everything's going to be good. So guys, expect an Avengers Infinity War review next week. Not on Monday, not on Wednesday, because we still try to at least respect the one week rule, which is no spoilers, no nothing until about one week. After that, then all bets are off. It's fair game. So you got seven days, guys. Kick up the pace. All right. So for this edition of the Game Changer, we decided that we wanted to actually just hype up the Infinity War movie. And what better way to do that than to mention a couple movies that we thought were really good, that really did help the build-up going into Infinity War, as well as some of our favorites going into Infinity War, and what are some of our expectations when it comes to Infinity War. So, with that being said, let's not waste any time. First, let's talk about some of the movies that were really good going into Infinity War. Uh, Victory Bill, why don't you get the ball rolling? What was one of your favorite movies going into Infinity War? Yeah, um, I guess I'll try to start with one of the earliest ones that I picked. Um, I think one of my favorite Marvel movies that went into Infinity War from the beginning was Guardians of the Galaxy. Um I have to say that this was kind of a surprise to me. I didn't really know much about the Guardians of the Galaxy beforehand. And they really did open up the whole, you know, treasure chest of what Thanos was, what he was doing in the galaxy before it even came to Earth, or before he even came to Earth. Um, it was an amazing trip. Uh, it's the first time they really integrated the music so well within the story, and it made you laugh. It made you get emotional. Uh, it, it was just a fun ride, and it was the first time most of the world, I feel like, got to to see who Star Lord was. It was one of the first accumulations of the superheroes. Um, yeah, I just really loved it, and I think that whenever Guardians of the Galaxy comes on, I'm I'm like, all right, I'll watch it. <laughs> Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy was indeed one of those movies that was kind of in the back burner for me for a while. But then I remember, I think it was the uh, Disney Movie Club, they had that whole deal where it's like, oh, sign up with us and you get $1 movies, at least five of them. And I thought, well, okay, what movies can I see here? Let's see, there's this one, this one, this one. Guardians of the Galaxy, well, I mean, I, I guess. So I did that as soon as it came. I put it in and I'm thinking to myself, I'm probably not even going to enjoy this, whatever. I mean, the only good thing about it is that it's got... My uh, one of my favorite wrestlers, Batista, in it, and yeah, I was very blown away at how this movie did so well. It had comedy, it had action, uh, really good storytelling. In all honesty, telling a little bit about Star Lord, uh, the relationship between Groot and uh, Rocket is absolutely amazing. I loved how they just played off each other so well, and I think even nowadays, I would love to see. Uh, Vin Diesel and Bradley Cooper just team up in a regular movie just to see you know, how they compare. And so many people would just be like, oh man, it's Rocket, it's Groot, only it's the people who played them. It's like, hey, it's still awesome, just give them a break. And even finding out how one of the uh, Guardians uh, has a little bit of a connection with Thanos even made it that much more of an interesting story, uh, that being, of course, Gamora. And, you know, going from that to also Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, building off the relationship between uh, her and with Nebula, and just 
really telling the kind of classic tale of, you know, this is kind of a sisterly battle between the two of them. But then Nebula, of course, opening up in the second one, saying that, you know, you were never really a sister there for me. You never really understood what it was like for, you know, to lose and to have, you know, Thanos basically tear you apart and replace you just so that you can get better. And it's one of those things where going into this, oh, man, I'm, I'm just picturing this, whether it's in part one or part two of... Uh, of Gamora and Nebula having, again, one of those sisterly deals and having an emotional scene between the two of them. I'm thinking, no, this is not fair, Marvel. You don't get to play with my emotions again. Stop it. Stop it now. Uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely feel like Guardians, you know, opened up the the, the door for Thanos to really come in, so I, I'm, I'm glad it was there. But what was your, what was one of your top three movies? Well, Guardians was indeed one of them, but I did have a backup just in case we had another repeat. But one of the ones that really uh, stood out to me, as well as it's going to play a factor for me, one of my expectations for this movie, is uh, the aftermath of Captain America Civil War. Because it created something that I think a lot of people were not really expecting, but still there were a lot of people that read the comics that were thinking like, oh, this was going to happen sooner or later. That being, of course, the friction between Captain America and Iron Man, Tony Stark and uh, Steve Rogers, where they both have different mindsets. Steve Rogers, uh, Captain America thinks that, you know, we need to defend people because it's the right thing to do. And Cap and uh, Iron Man is just saying, no, we need to put a cap on this so that way we don't have any more casualties. And, of course, you have those two massive egos just battling at each other. And this also introduced a lot of different you know, characters into this. Of course, we got to see Falcon get a little bit more action. We got to see the first glimpse of the Black Panther. Oh, baby, and did that make for an amazing movie. Uh, Ant-Man had his second appearance in the Marvel Universe, with his first being, of course, the Ant-Man movie. And then we, of course, got a first glimpse of Spider-Man, which honestly is like, <laughs> how could I pass up this movie? As much as I love Spider-Man Homecoming... This was the one where it's like, okay, we're getting a first glimpse of Spider-Man. We're getting a first glimpse of who Peter Parker is. This is awesome. So it does, again, tie into my expectation of that there's going to be friction in this movie. Yes, you see a lot of them, you know, getting along very well and they're teaming up very well. But I still see Captain America and Iron Man having issues between the two of them. Because it's not one of those things where they can just be like, oh, hey, how's it going? It's been a long time buddy-buddy going at each other. It's still one of those things where I think Tony is going to have that a bit of friction and animosity with the uh, captain. I think it's really going to play into the movie hard. It's going to cost big. I don't know how, but I just see that happening. Yeah, yeah. Civil War was definitely one of my top three movies to lead into it as well. Um, I guess if we're if we're trying not to like overshadow, it's gonna be hard because like uh, most of these movies were the top season; they were the best. Um, but yeah, I guess one of my uh, alternate choices I did have on here um, for one of my top three movies was uh, Iron Man, which is which I it was hard for me in general. I was like, am I am I for sure about this? I'm like. I don't know if you can't mention Iron Man, because Iron Man was the first movie in the Marvel Universe, you know, like, I'm not counting the previous Hulks and stuff, I'm well. counting <laughs> this version of the Marvel Universe, what introduced us to the start of, of it all was, you know, Robert Downey Jr. taking on the role of Iron Man, um, going to the Middle East and, like, effing everybody up is this, like, crazy, like... Tin Man type of thing. Um, it was a really good movie, and you kind of forget how good Iron Man was until you rewatch it. Like it, it was fantastic, and it it was what brought everybody into the Marvel universe. And I knew who Iron Man was, but I didn't know much about him. Um, but through watching these movies, I learned so much about Iron Man, and I, I like the character much more. I think. It's hard for me not to correlate uh, Robert Downey Jr. and him now because he does such a good Tony Stark. Um, but if that would be one of my alternates. Civil War was definitely on there, though, because Civil War, I, I mean, you can't 
Civil War was amazing. Isn't it just crazy how somebody can just have that one pivotal role in a certain movie, and after that, it's really hard to see them playing a different role? Like, I'm sure a lot of people, when they watched Iron Man, they just see hit, uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, as Iron Man. But he's done other movies, like, you know, um, he did Sherlock Holmes, he did... I'm trying to think of some other ones. Uh, there was a comedy, a Due Date with Zach Galifianakis, and all throughout those movies, I'm watching Robert Downey Jr., and all I'm just thinking to myself is, okay, enough talking, break out the suit. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely. Um, I, I, I could see that. <laughs> Actually, that would be honestly one of the funniest things you could do in Sherlock Holmes. He just pushes a button, and then the Iron Man suit just comes out. It's like, are they doing a crossover with Sherlock Holmes and Iron Man? Because I'm totally okay with it. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just hoping I'm not like tri- tripping on acid or something like that. Just <laughs> yeah, no, I, that would be that would have been really funny. But yeah, I actually am really starting to have some vague memories. But I do remember how really good the Iron Man movie was, and how it just basically started. It. Of course, a lot of people are going to say, "But Captain America was the first Avenger." Well. Granted, yes, he was, and maybe it says in the movie title, but Iron Man was the one who got the ball rolling and got people really excited and started getting a lot of these fantasy deals. And that would just transition well into uh, another one of mine, which would be uh, the movie The Avengers, the first one. Still one of the highest grossing movies of all time, and honestly, it's going to have some competition with Infinity War. I have a really good feeling about that. But... The Avengers movie is just so very well done because you have all of these single characters now finally combined and coming to be basically this, you know, League of Justice. Yes, I know I made a DC reference, so sue me. But having, of course, you know, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Iron Man, Captain America, the Hulk, uh, all of these characters just getting involved uh, oh, sure, I should mention Thor as well, because, you know, Thor Ragnarok, why not? Um, but having all of these characters coming and meeting for one common goal, and that is to bring justice, to bring peace to the world. And, of course, a lot of people kind of already had a feeling. It's like, well, if they're going to be combined together. They're going to have to take on a lot of big stuff. And they have in years. They've definitely either, you know, crossed over into other movies, or they introduced new characters, uh different ideas, different uh, different villains that a lot of people probably wouldn't even think of, but also just creating that nostalgia of, oh my gosh, this is one of these movies that we've been wanting for so long, because for a long time, it was just everybody gets a single movie, everybody gets a single movie, then finally Marvel's just like, well, you know what, screw it, let's just take a chance, let's bring everybody together, and it paid off immensely. Well, yeah, um, I I was under the impression that everybody got a single movie in order to make the Avengers. Uh, so, Whoa! Uh, for that. <laughs> I, I was about to <laughs> say... That, that was, yeah, that was the build-up, was to the Avengers. So I'm glad that it lived up to the hype, because I do, I do agree I loved the Avengers. It wasn't one of my picks on here. Just, I don't know why. Um, hmm. Kind of forgot about it. Which is not, <laughs> not that I forgot, forgot about it, but in general, I just didn't think... I don't know. Yeah. Leading <laughs> Avengers, I, I agree. <laughs> but, yeah, again, as Avengers have been going on, the uh, group is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, if you don't mind, I'll go into, like, the last one that I had, which was sure. uh, honestly a very odd pick, but at the same time it actually makes the most sense because, honestly, this was the one that opened the chapter for everybody to just start looking to the future and thinking, okay, we're got a, we got a starting point, we're building up to this. And that was, of course, Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, of course, a lot of people are definitely not going to say, you know, Ultron was the best villain, but it did also introduce a lot of different factors. Of course, we got, you know, two more Avengers put in. We got Quicksilver, even though R.I.P., and as well as uh, Scarlet Witch. We also got Vision involved, and we got to see what the power of the Infinity Stone was. And, of course, everybody cannot forget that final scene at the end of the movie. I'm talking very end, where we see a familiar gauntlet getting picked up and basically a big guy in purple just saying, well, 
if you, if they can't get it done right, just got to do it myself. And that was where people are just thinking, oh my God, are we getting Infinity War? Are, are we seriously getting Infinity War? This is where everybody just start freaking out like, I think we're getting Infinity War. We're, we're, we're getting this movie. We're getting this movie. We're getting it. They see the gauntlets. Uh, there's some stones missing. Yep. We're probably going to get Infinity War. And, of course, it got announced. It said, hey, we're doing Infinity War. And everybody just lost their shit. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I didn't necessarily enjoy that movie as much. I, I enjoyed it when I saw it. And then, like, I compared it to all the other movies. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, I guess this wasn't that great. Um, I did, like, more superheroes. Um, I like Scarlet Witch. I liked Vision. Um, they don't really... They haven't really done much yet, which... I think it's kind of a a missed opportunity, Marvel wise. Is Scarlet Witch is amazing, um, and the Vision they have quite a relationship, so it, it it would be it would be something that people would like. I would like uh, an interesting relationship that turns into you know a partnership and stuff like that. Um, but I, I definitely my third movie choice was Black Panther. I think just because. It was so well done that that it got me more hyped for Infinity War. Um, not because it preluded too much to it, but um, for the fact that if this is the caliber they decided to hit Black Panther at, I know they're trying to do something right with the movie, with the next movie, Infinity War. And so uh, that's kind of why I picked Black Panther is last just because it was so well done to the point where I'm like stoked and again it used the music it used the storyline it did everything it needed to to make it a great movie and so I'm just stoked to see if this is what they do with Infinity War I'm ready for it (laughs) (laughs) and all I could say to basically agree with that is Wakanda forever boom (laughs) just yeah, that movie absolutely blew my mind on how well it was done. And the fact they involved, of course, tradition, as well as futuristic aspects. Uh, the characters were pretty well developed. Uh, there was even a lot of, com- there's a, quite a bit of comedy in there that kind of, you know, I don't know if it really surprised me, but it was just really so well done how they just made it completely organic. It's just one of those things where it's like, you know, oh, we're trying to be funny, ha ha ha. It's just one of those things where it's like, this the situation they're in. This is actually pretty funny. So, how we go from that? And I think also it did help a lot of people that were in, you know ready for Infinity War, where people could actually just be like, okay, we need something that can you know take our mind off of that just for a minute, just so that we can kind of uh, brace ourselves for what is probably going to be the inevitable, and that of course being Infinity War. So I think Black Panther was definitely the good origin story that kind of took the focus off of Infinity War just for a little bit. But now, of course, like we said, we're focused on Infinity War, and it's going to be one of those things that is going to be absolutely amazing. And it starts tonight, folks, so be sure to get your tickets before somebody beats you to it. Otherwise, you're going to probably be like me going the next day or the next morning, whatever. But it's still going to be worth it. Hopefully, yeah. I, I, I don't know if it's going to be. I haven't seen it, so I can't say it's going to be worth it, but I, I would <laughs> hope it's going to be worth it. See, when you said hopefully, that was one of those things where it's like, wait a minute, is there something that you're not telling me? Is there something that's making you skeptical about this movie? Um, I mean, I don't know. The last Avengers movie was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, they tried to just bring a bunch of crap together, and it didn't work out that well. So... I just don't want. Uh, uh, I just don't want them to just like rely on the fact that oh, all these movies were great, so when we smash them together, it's going to be great. Like they need, they've been leading up so well, like having Thor meet with the Guardians because they're in space and other things. Like I want it all to happen very story wise, not like jumping to conclusions and just going well. Now they're just, oh, or suddenly, this is what I, I can foresee. It's like, oh, they're battling, they're battling. And suddenly, 
like da -da -da, a new music and all of a sudden another a new superhero comes in and he's just like yeah I'm here to fight with you guys and they're like we don't really even know you but the audience knows you so we're good so come on like I don't want anything like that I want it to be really played out well like Thor doesn't know the Guardians of the Galaxy they should not trust each other right away they're random different people in different situations so I just don't want them to just like mesh people together because we know them. I want the characters to know each other too. So that's one thing that I could foresee being bad is mm -hmm. they don't have enough time to introduce characters to one another because they want to get to the action, which is good. I want to get to the action too, but let's not, let's not disrupt the piece of character building. <laughs> so, so kind of, if I can understand this correctly, is that it's got to be something that's kind of organic or something that's kind of like uh, a cause and effect kind of deal where somehow, you know, obviously the way that they did the whole Guardians of the Galaxy Thor deal, it seems like, you know, uh, something happened to, you know, Thor's spaceship, which, you know, caused him to basically fly in space. And the effect is that he eventually winds up meeting up with Guardians of the Galaxy and it's not one of those things where, you know, it feels too rushed. It's just one of those things where, again, it feels organic. It's not one of those things where it's just like, oh, hey, this happened. Therefore, hey, let's just bring in this person in for no apparent reason other than the fact that you know them. Thumbs up, twinkle in the, in the smile. Just something like that. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. I want it to be, like, very, very thought out. I, I would like... I, I don't know. I think people understand what I'm saying when I'm like, let's just not like be like, all right, now we're hanging out. Sweet. We don't even care. Like, it's not like a, hey, Thor meets him. What's up, buddy? Handshake, fist, chest bumps, all this. Like, no, like they don't know each other. So I want, I want them to make a story so that I can believe that all these people are going to be like, I trust you to help save the world. Like, it doesn't just happen. Like, it's not like all because I know who the Guardians of the Galaxy is doesn't mean Thor knows who the Guardians of the Galaxy is because he doesn't know what I know. He's not breaking the fourth wall with me and being like, oh, who are these guys? Oh, wait, you've read about them your whole life or something like that. But, but no, like, that's what I mean. I don't want them to not give me story just because I know what's going to happen. I got you. you. You know, it's funny when you talk about like the handshakes and the, you know, chest bumps and stuff like that. I kind of want this to be a scene in the movie. I doubt it's going to happen, but I think it just would be funny if um, Black Panther and Star Lord were to meet <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the Black Panther does the whole, you know, Wakanda forever. And then, and then uh, Peter just looks at him and looks at everybody. He's like, uh, Star Lord forever. And she's like, what? <laughs> what? Are you that full of yourself, man? What the hell? <laughs> uh, you know, if it happens, it happens. But I'm going to go with it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things where I just see just see Peter Quill just doing something that random where he just like, I think I understand this. Like he thinks that his name is actually Wakanda or something like that. So he's just thinking like, oh, we put our names in. Okay. Or like Rocket tries to do it and it's like, no, Rocket, no, no, just no, dude. You, you dumb trash panda. Come on, man. Don't call me a trash panda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, but you did actually hit a point that I am hoping happens within the Infinity War. But to the point that you definitely mentioned is that I am hoping that they do introduce some new characters into this, some new Avengers. But definitely take your time building into that because a lot, a lot of rumors have been going around about how this that you know this Avenger's going to get killed off and this Avenger's getting killed off. They're getting higher up, so this one's going to get taken down. But, because I, I know that there's going to be a lot of people that, of course, read the rumors that, you know, Captain America's probably not going to be there. Iron Man's probably not going to be there for that much longer. It's going to be interesting to see how they do that. What I can actually foresee... Because this kind of ties into what they're doing with Ant-Man. Obviously, he's probably not going to be involved with Infinity War because of the fact they're doing Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, I could see also Spider-Man being taken out of 
Infinity War Part 1 for, like, the first, like, for the rest. Maybe he'll be a part of, like, the first 30 minutes, but then get ta- but then get taken out. Not killed. No, 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 no. Because they've already planned a Spider-Man 2 for, I think, next year. But I can also see this be one of those situations where uh, Tony Stark basically says, sa- says, hey, kid, you did your job. You did great. But you need to save your energy. You need to not, you know, get too involved in this. So basically, Tony Stark is putting him on the sidelines for now, and of course that gives him uh, Spider-Man reason to, you know, do this deal, uh, the, se- the second movie, because if it's going to be one of those things where it's like Insidious 6, or maybe it's going to be one of those things where he battles off against a different villain, uh, it gives him time to, you know, mature more, to think of new tactics, and then maybe uh, in Infinity War Part 2, he comes back? Possibly. See something like that. Uh, of course, they also mentioned Captain Marvel. She could play a role in the second part of the Infinity War. I don't see her being in the major, you know, first part of it. Unless they do like a cliffhanger, which I think that would be really risky to do. But, um, I do think that she could play a role in the second part. Because, obviously, like I said, there might be people... Basically, what I'm saying is that with them taking members of the Avengers out, there is room to bring new people in. And it's really sad to say that because people love Captain America, people love Iron Man, but they also know they're not truly destined to be on this world forever unless they somehow find a way to do what they did with, I guess, the Logan movie where they had that CGI animated younger Logan uh, pop up. But... I just don't see them doing that with, you know, uh, Tony Stark and uh, Captain America. But, like I said, new characters have to kind of come in to kind of fill in those spots. Not fill the void, because obviously, once those guys are gone, that's going to be very hard. And a lot of people are going to be saying, like, oh, you can't replace, you know, Captain America with Falcon or with Bucky. Or you can't replace Iron Man with, you know, uh, with uh, Pepper or um, I was at War Machine. It's just one of those things where it's like, you know, they're just assuming the role that they were probably given to by the person that preceded them. You kind of get what I'm saying? No, I I get what you're saying. I just, uh, I can see the Marvel Universe lines it up so that when their time is done, they have a new person. So I don't think we have been introduced, well, we've been introduced to one of the new people that that Captain America will be taken over by, but we haven't been really introduced to anyone else that Iron Man's been, uh, that could could replace Iron Man. There's obviously, you know, his Iron Patriot friend and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, are, are we getting into what you want out of Infinity War, what you're looking for out of Infinity War? Uh, Yeah, that was kind of what I was trying to think will happen uh, during Infinity War, is that, like I said, they'll introduce new characters um, once one character has been killed off. And for all we know, it could could be the original Avengers, because obviously when... uh, Ah, shoot, when when was that? Was that uh, Vision who had the the, uh, premonition with Thor or something like that, where they had, like, all the... Avengers were dead or something like that, and well, that might have been Age of Ultron. I can't remember. I remember that scene so well, but I can't remember which movie it was from. That, that they all died. Um, yeah, I don't remember. It must have been Age of Ultron. <laughs> I, I I don't remember. I'm I'm only <laughs> laughing because it's the one movie we're probably trying to erase from our memory, at least most parts of it. Yeah, it wasn't that great, um, but. I think, sorry, you were you were on a point there. I was going to start getting into my three things, but what what was your? No, that that was my point. So of it? that 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 was my point that I drew across. Okay. But but yeah, I guess I can piggyback on that. Is that what do I expect out of the new Inven- Avengers Infinity War movie? Is I expect death. I expect new heroes. And I expect progression into the new Marvel age, which would be like having some of the superheroes be 
younger, having some of the superheroes be women instead of men, and maybe different races, all that stuff, because the Marvel, Marvel decided to do that, you know, a few years ago. People weren't necessarily loving it, just because they were... They weren't explaining their transitions as much, but I think that these movies could really explain, like, what happened and why so-and-so is is doing this instead of, you know, Tony Stark or instead of, uh, I was going to say Chris Rogers. But what is this? Steve Rogers. Thank you. I was like, <laughs> Chris Evans, but, Mr. Um, Rogers. <laughs> right? Like, what? What is his name? <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I'm hoping for Infinity War is that everything I want out of it that, I, I mean, and this is just part one, so I guess it's a lot to expect out of just part one, but mm. definitely I, I kind of feel like we might get some deaths in part one that can lead to new heroes. Um, but well, yeah, I don't know how much the progression into the new Marvel age will happen in part one. That's a little high expectation. Well, I think there might be quite a bit. I've gotten a chance to at least look, and it's going to at least be about a three-hour movie. So I think they're going to get a lot in in just three hours. But like I said, hopefully it's not one of those things that they rush everything. They need to progress with the characters. They need to create a good story. They need to get all these things you know taken care of. And... One story that I am hoping is, you know, I don't know if I would say fulfilled, but, you know, is is, ba- is basically, uh, what I'm hoping is, is basically how the movie ends for this one, because I think it will definitely make for a uh, more intense story going into part two, is that if anything right now, one of the things I've definitely learned when it comes to a lot of these trilogies, whether it's Pirates of the Caribbean, whether it's Star Wars, whether it's... Uh, anything like that, is that the villain needs to be the one that looks really dominant at the end of the movie. And so that's why I do need to preface this, that I think that Thanos needs to be the one that has all the advantages right now. Whether he gets all the Infinity Stones, whether he gets you know halfway there, and basically part two they're trying to get, get to him before he reaches the last two. Just have him very, very... Dominant. Don't let it be one of those things where, you know, maybe he just runs away or something like that. No, he's got to be in control at the end of the movie because then that way the Avengers can regroup and that they can think of a different strategy and they can think, you know, how can we defeat Thanos? And of course, since Gamora is going to be a factor into this, I think that she is definitely going to be the one who basically says, this is what, you know, the Infinity Stones are kind of about. And who knows? We might even get cameos by the, um, what was it again? Uh, there's the Collector, and then there was Jeff Goldblum's character. Somehow I think those two are going to definitely be intertwined in this somehow. Yeah, no, I could definitely see other uh, the little characters making cameos again. Um, uh, I hope that Gamora isn't the main person to explain it. I think that a lot of people will be kind of knowing of Thanos, but I understand why you would pick Gamora, just because she lived with the guy for a while. Um, I just don't feel like they've given Gamora any any opportunity to me to make her... Like, I, I don't feel like she's amazing. Um, if she is, then they haven't given her that opportunity to show me. So I think she's um, amazing, just case in point for me. Anyway... Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I, I haven't seen anything in any of the movies that I was like, oh crap, she's sick. Like all I've seen is she gets kicked around. Um, I would like, I like the dual wielding, but yeah, I, I've never seen her actually kick some butt from my perspective. <laughs> so if she's the person who's going to be like, this is how we kill him, I'd be like, okay show us something. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Well, I think that, um, I think that you have your, uh, next point right now, what you expect from this. Cause I, I did hit, like I said, one of my points, that being, you know, Thanos gotta look strong, gotta look big. I, I say, I say that of course, and I 
think to myself, oh, great, I'm putting wrestling terms in this. No, i got to think of this more, you know, more either like layman's terms or just the terms of, you know, uh, what, what would something that, you know, somebody that what, reads comic books would sit, think, uh, 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 oh, he's got to look, uh, he's got to look, uh, he's got to look tough, he's got to look powerful. There we go. Something like that. If somebody, somebody says, like, so it's like, what does he mean by it looks strong? It's like, no, I'm I'm saying he's got to look really good, basically. Oh, it's like, anyway. But uh, did you have another point that you wanted to make as far as, you know, what you expect from Infinity War? Yeah, I said all my three. I said deaths, new heroes, and progression into Oh, Okay. So I got all three down, but if you'd like to talk about them more, you totally can. See, I didn't realize that those were like all three of your points. I thought that that was just one point, and uh, <laughs> I thought that you know there was going to be a little more, more to it. That was where I got confused. I thought it was just you know this is one point, and then it's like okay, well, what's the next point? No, those are all three of mine. Oh, well, shows how much I'm paying attention at nine o'clock in the morning. No, you're fine. You're fine. But no, yeah, that's. That's kind of why I added them all together, um, because that's what I, I don't know, I, I, all three of those things is what I want out of the movie, so, and I don't know what I meant really by New Heroes, um, I think it, it meant like transferring ownership of what a hero, like, oh, I'm the new Captain America, oh, oh I'm the new Iron Man, something like that, but. I, I could see that something like that happening. Like I said, there's all these rumors about who's going to take over for, you know, Captain America when he's gone, who's going to take over for Iron Man when he's gone. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see how they really transition to that, but it's going to be one of the more heart-wrenching moments in the movie because people see it coming, but they really don't want it to happen because people fell in love with these characters. Whether, you know, I've been a fan of... uh, Captain America or not is beside the point. I still, it's still one of those characters that I look at and think to myself, can't really see another Marvel movie without this guy. He's done a great job of assembling, of, you know, being a part of the assemblance of all these characters, of all of these heroes. And he's the one who, you know, quote unquote, started the Avenger name of the Avenger moniker. Now, of course, you know, Tony Stark was. The one that, you know, kind of started off with Iron Man. Uh, people could also make the argument that, you know, oh, it was all Nick Fury. He was the one that had the vision. Well, true. But you would have to think that, you know, a lot of these guys would have to realize, you know, kind of like what they did with uh, Batman and Superman, where, you know, one hero is seeing another hero. So they're thinking, like, you know, are they an enemy or are they a friend? Uh, you would have to think that they would have something like that with, you know, Captain America and Iron Iron Man, or, you know, say, uh, Black Widow and, you know, the Hulk. Obviously, they... Actually, that's going to be another interesting thing, is that yeah. this could probably be the first time that those two are actually, you know, together since... Was it Age of, Ult- Age of Ultron? Holy crap. It's been that long since they've actually been, like, you know, together on screen. That's... That's actually, that's that's actually kind of crazy now that I'm thinking about it. Just it's kind of like settling in where it's like, oh wow, been that long. Oh yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, we saw in Ragnarok, obviously the Hulk still had some sort of feelings for her. Um, that was a weird thing to me in in the in the first place is that the Hulk and Black Widow. I'm like, what? I don't really get that. But in Age of Ultron, you kind of see them kind of work work stuff out that they wouldn't have before. They're like, oh, well, I'm a monster. I can't do this. And she's like, I'm a monster, too. And it was a cute little, like, vulnerable moment between the two. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know much about that relationship comic book-wise, but I wasn't ready for that. I was like, that's who they, that's who she's kind of finagling with is the whole <laughs> Like, uh, really? That's who you choose? Um, <laughs> but, um, I don't know. Yeah, it would be an interesting thing to see, and interesting to see if they, what they get out of it, since he's been gone for so long, almost like he's dead. So, I, I don't remember seeing a movie with her, I guess, the Civil War, but she didn't really do much, um, 
story wise, you know, she was just doing her thing, but she didn't do much like personal growth, which is what you don't. I mean, it was Civil War. It was an, a Captain America movie, but there wasn't. They, they threw everybody in there. I loved it. I loved that they threw everybody in there. But when you just throw people in there, they don't explain why so and so isn't there. You're kind of like, oh, what's going on? So I, I don't know. It, it would be interesting, but like I said, I, I don't know how I feel about the relationship in general. Well, hopefully that they do, you know, again, as we mentioned before, do some kind of character development. Again, obviously, a lot of us were hoping for, you know, a Black Widow movie or a Hawkeye movie just so that we can get more depth as to, you know, the characters of, you know, who they are, where they came from. Obviously, they did not do that. And I think that it wasn't until Age of Ultron, I would say, that they kind of gave Hawkeye a bit more depth to his character, finding out, because I honestly was probably one of those people that was just like, oh, maybe Hawkeye and, you know, Black Widow are going to end up together. And then I find out, oh, he's married and has kids. Oh, well then, I, I'm just going to keep that thought, you know, over here. I didn't say anything, just nothing. Nope, nope. It's I wasn't already ready to do, like, you know, Mash up names between the two of them? No, no, that was not at all going through my mind at all. And I don't need no arrow getting pointed at me for that. But you definitely could tell the relationship that, you know, the two of them have, though, regardless, that they are really good friends and that they are, even during Civil War, I just thought it was absolutely funny how they're just fighting each other. And it's just like, oh, we're still going to be friends, right? It's like, oh, totally, yeah. <laughs> so, at least, yeah, at least they give the two, two of them a little bit of, you know, little bit of development between the two of them, so that way they know, like, oh, they're friend- they've been friends for years. It's like, oh, okay. But, yeah, I do agree that if you don't have that much character development, it does create for uh, hard to, I guess, I guess hard to, you know, either relate with characters or just hard to get behind them. I think, you know, to your point of, you know, Gamora, she probably didn't do much in your vision. Well, that's because she probably hasn't really been too much of a main focus other than probably the 30 seconds that she was with Thanos or that whole scene that she had with Nebula. Other than that, they've really not just done that much. I mean, they've given, like, a bit of a romance between Star-Lord and her, but nothing really too solid. I think we actually talked about this in a earlier podcast where... I said I could see this being a relationship, but you said, no, I could see them more being just, you know, really close friends and just really being close to each other. Uh, that was probably... I, when we, that. I don't remember. I, I think that was when we did the uh, Guardians uh, Volume 2 review. That was, like, years ago. That was, like, a year ago. But anyway. Okay. Um, I definitely could see Star-Lord and Gamora having a relationship, yes. I think they want us to see that. <laughs> I... Well, I was on crack. <laughs> <laughs> I also, this is just one of those funny things that I think would be hilarious if they did that. Um, obviously, they mentioned, uh, well, when we talk about Guardians of the Galaxy, obviously the newest member of that group being, of course, Mantis. She's going to play an interesting role in that because she really hasn't, again, that much development. But I'm hoping that, you know, they develop more of the friendship or maybe the relationship between her and Drax. Honest to God, if somehow those two end up together, I will laugh because that I will be that person that says, so you remember Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 where he basically just started vomiting in his mouth just imagining being with Mantis? And now I'm watching Infinity War thinking, wow, he's not really throwing up that much anymore. When did that change? When did, when did Drax get a heart? Yeah, I think Drax is just immature. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, I mean, he, he's been through a lot. All of so when I was talking about Gamora not showing off anything to me, I wasn't saying personal development. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is one, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is one of the Marvel series that really does develop their characters really well, and that's why I personally enjoy all the characters so much, and that's why I said like Guardians of the Galaxy is one of my top pick movies of leading up to Infinity Wars. Um, what I meant by they didn't, they haven't shown me that Gamora is powerful. I, I don't know of a point that oh. I saw Gamora being powerful. Okay. I saw her beating up her sister, which seems like something that, that they did often. Uh, 
she didn't do that well against her sister, and her sister wasn't crap. Like, she wasn't shit. Like, she was nothing compared to what Thanos is going to be. So for me, when we were talking about who is going to kind of step up against Thanos and who could help out versus Thanos, I, I couldn't see Gamora being that great of an option just because they have not shown me her power at all. So if I would like, I would love to see her power. I have not seen anything. I feel like all of the Guardians of the Galaxy, they haven't really shown us that they're, any one of them could stand on their own. Like, Groot is the only one who, in the first film, had some amazing abilities that you were like, holy crap, this guy's powerful. Everyone else, like, even Drax and that, like, they all got beat up pretty easily. Um, yeah, they're aliens, but there's nothing that I, as a viewer, can compare them to. So I'm like, I cannot compare them. I do not know where their power stance is. Character building wise, they did great. They did awesome. I, I love the character building that Guardians of the Galaxy does. I want that in Infinity Wars. Fair enough. I think. Uh, well, I don't know. I just think that you know, it, it doesn't really matter the power of the person. Oh God, how, how do I word this right? I eh, forget. Yeah. forget. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I I was trying to do like you know something like where you know. It's not the power that makes the superhero, it's the person that makes the superhero, something like that, something along those lines. But it would have been something much cooler and something that people could actually put on a t-shirt. But anyway, um, <laughs> there, there was a time where uh, Star-Lord was actually pretty powerful. He arguably could have been the most powerful, you know, man in the group because oh, yeah. of his, because uh, of his, you know, uh, deal that he had with the ego, but now the ego's gone, he's just a regular person, so that does bring it back to your point of, you know, can he really stand on his own without his powers? Well, probably not. If anything, I could see him definitely getting shot because of the fact that he shoots his mouth off. But then again, Chris Pratt does an amazing job doing that, so Chris Pratt, just keep just keep doing what you're doing. I'm like Star-Lord, just do an amazing job. Um, but yeah, I see your point that you're trying to make. It's just going to be interesting to see how this all plays out during Infinity War. Everything that we have talked about, we have so many questions that we want answered. Are we going to get them all answered? Probably not. But a good majority of them, and even some questions that we didn't know we had, will have answered where it's like, oh, this person's going to be, oh, this person's going to be, well, okay then, we're getting, we're getting this, we're getting this new storyline here. And... Again, it's going to be interesting to see how many characters are probably going to you know, still be around after Infinity War Part 1, but also some that are not going to be around, whether they're dead or they just get kind of written off just so that they can do uh, something else. Like I said, I still can see Spider-Man just getting, you know, being told, you know, stay back, recover, get stronger, and then come back and fight, uh, which would probably make more sense with his second uh, Spider-Man movie, because... Obviously, how are you going to do that if he's still fighting with, you know, the Avengers in space? It just didn't seem to really make sense. Unless they even tell him, you know, we're going to space, we're going to battle Thanos. We need you to stay here. Something like that. I guess, Actually, that seems very likely that they could do that, now that I think about it. Why I'm obsessed with Spider-Man and him staying on Earth, I don't know. I'm, I'm too much of a Spider-Man geek, so, so sue me. Anyway, but yeah, gosh, this... This movie is just going to be absolutely mind-boggling, but also going to be mind-exploding at how well it could be written. But, of course, there could be some room to fail. Like I said, they hyped up Age of Ultron, and then it was just like, eh, not one of my favorites. Let's just hope this is not another Age of Ultron. Let's just hope that this is an Avengers. Let's hope this is a Civil War. Let's hope this is a Thor Ragnarok. Let's just hope it's just, again, a really good set of movies just combined into this three-hour movie. Because, like yeah. I said, this, this is a two-parter. Because they have to do this twice. They have to hit two home runs. They have to hit a grand slam with these two movies. Otherwise, it's like, well, Marvel's got a good run. But DC, your move. Yeah, I definitely think that because it's a part one, I don't know how satisfied we all will be. But I think, hopefully, given the, giving it another year doing part two, I think... I, I'm hoping we'll all be very satisfied. Uh, they did a lot of work on it. A lot of cool pictures, a lot of cool things coming out about it. So, 
I'm excited, but yeah, I mean, anytime you go to the movies and you see a part one, you're going to walk out the door being like, ah, what, why are we, what, I want to go see it now, (laughs) and that's, that's not. You you know, I think I'm one of those people that can actually be a little more open-minded about them taking a couple years to get that going, because I look back on, you know, back in the olden days when they basically had those kind of movies, like, I think the Star Wars Movies they had maybe like a five year gap between the two of them, but before the for them before they actually got all of them out. So, guys, if you're going to complain about you know waiting two years, then you need to go back in time to when it was 19, I think 75 or something like that when Star Wars first came out, and then just watch that and be like, oh, is there going to be another one? Yeah, but it's going to take five years. Crap. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That would suck. But good <laughs> thing they're like planning it so it comes out a year. So. Right. That's yeah, definitely. All right. So I think that we've got everything that we need to talk about that down here. Like we said, next week we'll be doing a Infinity War review. Like I said, if I've seen it three times, then God help me if I forgot anything, I will be ashamed of myself. But I don't think that's all going to be the issue. So... Yeah, happy Avengers Infinity War Day to everyone. I can't believe that we're basically celebrating a war, but you know what? This is one of those things that we can get away with. So, with that being said, it's time for the shameless plugs that we like to always do. Of course, you can always follow us on Twitter, on Facebook. Give us a like, give us some comments, let us know what you guys think. Uh, Victory Bell, do you have any events that are coming up in the near future that your fans can definitely be excited for? Yeah, this this Saturday, April 28th, is the Fame Gala to support the arts. You know, um, Foundation of Artists Mentored in Entertainment is hosting its annual gala. There will be ten different acts, uh, drinks, dinner, dancing, really fun time in uh, Chicago, the Chicago Yacht Club Belmont is where it's going to be held. It's from 6 to 11, and I hope to see people there. Uh, I'm definitely going to be there. I'll be helping, you know, take some photos and do some things for fame. So if anyone wants to come support young artists in Chicago, come on out to that event this Saturday. Yep, go check that out, you guys. We'll have a link in the uh, Game Changer page, so that way you know where to go, you know the information. So for that, oh boy, I I feel like my mind is just exhausted from all this conversating that we've done. And again, it's Infinity War. It's going to be absolutely crazy. I'm super psyched about it. The next 12 hours, 24 hours, I should say, cannot come any faster right now. So, (laughs) So with that being said... This has been the Game Changer, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Nate the Effing Great, joined here as always, and very grateful to have you here by my side, the one and only Victory Bell. Again, go check her stuff out. It's absolutely amazing. Give her some likes. Give her some comments. Be nice, guys. Be nice and behave. Because even though there's a lot of stuff where it is absolutely too hot to handle, still be respectful. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, this has been an episode of The Game Changer, and we will talk to you guys next week. Wakanda forever. Wait, Infinity War forever. There we go. See ya. Bye.